Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a map um, inspired by, uh, let me just open the box folder real quick, this little image here. Oops, not that one. Well, uh, this image right here. Um, again, from the from the True Detective opening credits. Even if you look if you look at this map much closer, you actually see there is a map of the Mississippi right here, so which is kind of cool. Um, so we're going to use this as our inspiration. We're going to use like a similar color scheme. We're going to use this. We're going to use the, the same uh, contrast techniques in here, and we're going to use the same placement of like text text and maps and that kind of stuff to make it look good. So uh, I'm in Photoshop. I'm just going to create a new map document. I'm just going to do a uh, uh, 36 by 48 size map, right? Because that's the map size that I'm asking you guys to uh, produce for this assignment. And then I'm just going to bring in the uh, screenshot from that one uh, sequence here. And I'm just going to make it full screen just to have it as a reference in the background. I'm just going to uh, get rid of the uh, background layer. I'm going to add a uh, color layer, and I'm going to oops, going to uh, use the the color of the background of this image as my background layer. So I'm going to use the color picker and just pick a color. You can see that's the color. So now I've I've extracted the color of the the background of this image. Let me turn. Sorry. Let me turn the Okay, so then what I'm going to do, uh, in the box folder, uh, there is a Illustrator map, STL region uh, demo. This is just a map that I've been making. Uh, this map is actually a map I've been making for work, but it's, it's, uh, you can use it for this demo. So I'm just going to place that, in, place that into uh, uh, Photoshop. I've used the Place Embedded option. So I'm just going to find that map. It's actually on my desktop here. And whenever you're placing Illustrator objects into Photoshop, uh, use the media box crop option. That way it always maintains the uh, artboard size. So I'm just going to hit enter. And that's going to rasterize that map on here. Now right now it doesn't look like anything like this. So we're going to adjust the colors to make it look like that. So I'm going to double click into the smart object by clicking on the little corner of this thing here. And that will open the smart object in Illustrator. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a simple base map from this. I'm going to turn off all the layers. I want a simple map that shows the water, that shows the parks, and it shows some of the major roads as well. So I'm just going to do like maybe that. And I'm going to turn the water. Right now it's blue. We want to, want to use this high contrast color scheme here. So instead of blue water, we're going to make it black water. So I'm just going to open the swatch option and just make it a dark dark blue. I'm going to save that. So now the smart object has been saved and now it will re-render in here like so. What I'm going to do now is maybe I'm going to take this map here I'm going to size it and just scale it to kind of uh, accomplish what we want which is to put the you know most important objects in the middle of the the frame here, so downtown St. Louis, uh, the curve, this curve of the Mississippi should probably be in the middle of the image, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add one more layer on top of this. Uh, uh, in this case, I'm going to make a map about transportation. So one easy way to add another layer on top of this is to uh, take this uh, smart object and then uh, use the, um, uh, where is it? Uh, actually, I think you should right click. Yeah, sorry. Right click on the layer and click on new smart object via copy. And what this does is it creates another uh, smart object, but it's not it's not going to be linked to the previous smart object. So basically, you've copied that Illustrator file, so to speak. And so now I'm going to open that smart object and just I'm just going to use the transit layer. So this is just some layers that we put together for a project we're doing in the office. Um, basically, we want to look at the future Metrolink line of St. Louis. So if you know St. Louis, we have currently we have uh, trying to follow these layers here. Currently have our you know basic Metrolink line. That's that's doing that right now. 
Um, but there has been a plan to do a north-south line um, that cuts through downtown and also goes down uh, Grand. But then there's also these other extensions that are being planned. I don't know how, how long it will take to make, but these are they're part of the plan. And then there's a uh, commuter rail that will take you to Alton in uh, Illinois. And then there is this bus, ra bus rapid transit extension, so basically a bus line that would connect you to St. Charles and uh, south of St. Louis. Anyway, that's just stuff, but I'm just gonna use this layer here as my uh, foreground, so I'm gonna save that. So then Photoshop, you should see that layer pop up and you see it doesn't affect the smart object below it. This is my favorite way of making maps is to use smart objects that are uh, embedded within Photoshop. Um, I'm gonna take this layer here, I'm just at a blending mode, so I'm gonna right click on that, click blending options, and I'm just gonna say a color overlay and maybe make it white or something. Maybe let's make it uh, dark black. Then maybe let's make the background, instead of making that black, maybe let's make that white. So we can, there's a couple ways we can do that. I think you can, you can use difference or you can, oops, uh, just add a blending mode on top of that. So maybe go to blending options, color overlay, and make that white. So let's again reference our initial image here to see that if we're kind of like matching that. Maybe it does look better with this as black and with this as a white highlight. And then maybe if I look back at this map here, you kind of see things kind of have like this uh, glowing effect effect to it. Maybe let's take this uh, line here and add a glowing effect using the blending mode. So I'll just do a glow or something. Uh, maybe a, a uh, drop shadow. Okay. And then maybe uh, that looks okay. Maybe let's add a text layer, uh, kind of where this is right now. So I will just kind of add a uh, text box kind of in the middle of the page. Um, I'll call this one St. Louis Metro Link, and I'll change the font size now. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it 100. Let's make it black. Um, and then let me look at this thing again. You see what they did with the font. They actually have two fonts. They have a nice uh, serif font for the uh, title, and they have a nice sans serif font for the name here. So we can do the exact same again. I'm just stealing, just stealing the, the format. So I mean, let's make the St. Louis part a nice serif font. So I'll just take that and maybe make it uh, like that. I'm gonna make it all caps, St. Louis. Then let's make Metrolink a little bit bigger. Maybe make this white. So again, since we're using a mid-tone background, we can go up or down. Then let's add a text box or something. Just fill it with text. And this is going to be your description of uh, the map on hand. So I'll just paste some lorem ipsum in there. I'll make that a smaller font, like so. So you kind of see like it's the, the beginnings of a uh, fairly clean looking map are in the works. Oh, I didn't turn on this layer. There we go. Uh, the beginnings of a fairly clean looking map are in the works here. A few other things you can do, for instance, uh, right now all the stuff on the outside is less important than the stuff on the inside. So one thing you could do is you could uh, mask the outside stuff. So some, some things that people like to do is to create a ring, uh, not a ring, not a square, uh, a ring around 
most important aspects of your drawing. And then mask, mask it. So I'll just add a mask on top of that. Then maybe the more important aspect, which is this layer, goes outside the mask, so it kind of spills over it, like so. Something like that. So again, again, see this is about the St. Louis Metrolink extension. Maybe another thing I like to do generally is I like to uh, add uh, filters. So I like this color lookup option here. I like to find some of these photo filters to add on top of it. And that kind of like adjusts the colors to make it a bit more attractive. So you can find ones that make, that make the whole thing look good and consistent. And the last thing I might do is maybe add an image, say like a photograph. Like right, right now it's St. Louis Metrolink, um, but it's not as obvious that it's about St. Louis Metrolink. So what I can do is I can go on Google and search for St. Louis uh, Metrolink. Just find a good image. Um, that we can use as a as a as a image to overlay. So let's see. Uh, well, the, this image here is actually not bad. This one. So I'll copy that and I'll paste it in here. Do something like that, and then maybe uh, I'll put that at the very bottom because we don't want that to um, be the most important element. You might take that, you might uh, desaturate it, so just desaturate because I don't need that color, and then add a say a screen or a lighten filter on top of that. Maybe something like that. Or actually, sorry, maybe a darken. Yeah, like a color burn. That doesn't look that bad. Let me increase the contrast so the sky doesn't uh, show up as hard. Maybe let's do something like this. And then for this other half here where you don't have images, I'll just use the, the content aware. So you can shift F5 and content aware fill that. And I'll just like kind of figure out the rest of that background. I don't know how well this will, how well this will work, but oh man, that doesn't work. That didn't work that well. Anyway, I'm not gonna dwell on that too much, but you can kind of get the idea. Let's maybe move this up a bit more. Yeah, move this down a bit more. Maybe decrease the opacity slightly. Honestly, I mean, the demo didn't play out as strongly as I thought, but let me show you what I made to prepare for the demo, and you can kind of get a sense of what I was going for. Um, let me see, open recent. Um, this is what I made in preparation for the demo. I made something like this. So I, I found a different image for the Metrolink image here and I made the map on the side here. Um, I also added a, a film grain uh, filter on top of this just to give it a kind of grainy look. But again, it's all kind of like uh, being inspired by that little image in the, in, as a start point. As you can see, it doesn't look exactly like the final uh, graphic, but you can imagine different ways to uh, what you can do is you can you can add say like a pattern um, like if you go to the pattern option here you can create a bunch of different patterns and in this case I have a pattern of like this uh, watercolor effect here so I just use this as my backdrop mm -hmm. then I use an overlay filter it's this in this case it didn't work that well but uh, maybe you can play around with that but the darker the, the darker the background, the better it works out. Actually, that, that, that looks pretty good now. So, in about 15 minutes, I made a map, right? 
and it was inspired sort of by a, uh, this image here. All this is meant to show is, again, how, how you can produce a drawing with powerful graphics without having to try to figure out, figure out the graphics just through working the map. Just pick a graphic that you find and then build a map off of that. Um, so, so that's the first, first example, and then I'll move on to the next example. So I'm going to make a map, and it's going to be the Firefly map. And the story about fireflies, I did a quick research on that. Fireflies are uh, being threatened by light pollution in urban areas. So in order to create a map, I, now I know my story. The story is about fireflies, A, and then light pollution, B. That's all you need. I need two data sets, one data set related to light pollution, and one data set related to where fireflies live. So to start, um, I found a, and this is the, uh, uh, one of the rasters I gave you. It's like uh, this F18-2013. Uh, this is a, uh, a light pollution raster data set. And uh, in the uh, week five folder, I'll show you where I found this information in case you, you're curious. Um, there's a links folder. And it's this first link up here. If I go and paste that into my browser, uh, this is uh, a data set of uh, uh, night lights, night lights in, uh, in the world. And so basically they, they captured this image and I downloaded this last item here, F18, 2013. It looks like they only go to 2013. So that's why I had to work with. And then I processed that data set and I brought it into uh, GIS and this is what I get. So you can see it's a very, actually very nice looking map. Uh, let me turn, sorry. So uh, this is the uh, raster data set of uh, the, I guess you can call it light pollution map. Right now it's a uh, black to white gradient and you can click on the gradient here and can change the color ramp to make whatever you want. Don't use this, don't use, ever use the rainbow ramp because um, that's gonna get you a low grade um, in my class. <laughs> Now, not that, not that a low grade is the most important thing in the world, but just because. Um, but let's say you look at the, you're looking at these ramps and you're saying these options here and you're saying to yourself, actually, I don't like any of these ramps at all. Um, how do you make your own custom ramp? What you do is you go to uh, Customize Style Manager and you open up the first folder here that has all your styles and there should be a color ramp folder in there. And this is how you make new color ramps. So let's just make one color ramp for this particular map. So just go to new. Let's call this one new. There's a bunch of options here. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but let's just do algorithmic color ramp. And as you can see, you can pick your own uh, color ramp here. So let's just do like a nighttime to daytime gradient. So let's do like a dark blue for nighttime. Um, make go to more colors and just make it a bit darker. Then the second color could be like a light yellow. And you can see there are different algorithms that adjust the gradient level. So you can pick whatever one you want. I think this one's much, this is the best one. It's nice and clean. Let's make this uh, yellow a nice bright yellow. Uh, HSV, something like that. So I'll just call this one. Uh, you see I made it er uh, one similar earlier when I was testing this, but let's just call this one. Um, night time lights. And then you can add that color ramp to this uh, just by going here. It should, new ones should like pop at the top. So I believe this is it here. So that doesn't look bad at all. Um, again, you can also, um, I think I explained this other times, you can adjust the symbology in here. So right now it's a continuous ramp, which is what, what I think we want. But if you want, you can do a, classi a classified ramp. So if you click on classified, um, that's just it's doing its thing right now. It's thinking about it. You can make it make the uh, uh, make the uh, breaks a bit more di distinct. So uh, let's say something like that, and let's pick that one ramp we made. If I can find it, I think it's this one right here. 
And what this does, if you zoom in, if you zoom out, you see that the areas are a lot, the zones are more distinct, as you can see here. Like there's this step, that step, that step, that step, as opposed to a continuous stretched uh, map, which uh, is a lot more smooth. I think this looks better, so we'll just use that. All right, I digress. Yeah, let's, let's get to the map making part. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a map that has this piece of information. So this is the light pollution in the world. And then I need to understand where are the fireflies in the world. And so I did my research. I looked up firefly habitats on Wikipedia, which is the worst uh, source for anything, but why not? Um, firefly habitat. And uh, what Google tells me is that they live in warm, temperate regions and moist, uh, moisture environments. So this is kind of the climate that I'm looking for. Uh, and you can safely assume that in those environments, you will probably find fireflies. So I use this as my guide. And so the next thing I got is this uh, climate map right here. And this climate map I got from the second two links. So we go here. Um, this is uh, the climate classification map. And I downloaded one of these guys here. And this basically classifies the entire world into dry, tropical, temperate, humid, wet climates. So we can find the right climate uh, for our grasshoppers, or not for our fireflies. Um, I'm sure grasshoppers live in the same climate as fireflies. Um, so this is a raster data set, as you can see here. Um, and I want to turn this raster data set into a shapefile data set so that I can easily pick out uh, the areas that are temperate and the areas that are tropical. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Arc Toolbox, go to uh, Conversion, and we're going to do a uh, From Raster, then a Raster to Polygon option. And if your raster data set is um, an integer raster, basically it's the values are uh, integers. It's hard to explain. There's, a floating, there's, thing, there's something called a floating uh, raster data set and an integer raster data set. If it's an integer, integer raster data set, you can turn it into a shape file. If it's a floating data set, such as a DEM, you can't. You don't have to understand that. That's not a big deal. But for now, let's just turn this into a, uh, into a shape file. So raster to polygon. So double click on that dude. And it's on the side here. Oh, come on. OK, so we're going to input that uh, raster in here. And then we're going to. Um, let that load, and then uh, I'm just going to leave the uh, last two as is. I'm going to uncheck this simplified polygons option because uh, we don't need to do that, and just click OK. And then soon it's thing. So this should take a second. So, okay, so this is the result. As you can see, it turned that raster into a shapefile data set, um, and now each shapefile has the classification for its climate associated with it. So now we can uh, be begin to pick out zones uh, that have the climate that we want. So I'm going to open the attribute table here. And it's on the side again for some reason. Let's move it like so. Let's move this to the side like so. So you see the. Uh, I believe it's the grid code. Yes, the grid code. This is the climate classification. So we need to find out what these numbers mean. So I'm just going to go here and uh, uh, hang on one sec. Uh, so just to, to quickly uh, speed up the process, I know the correct climates for uh, the firefly population. Uh, firefly population. They live in the tropical tropical climates, and they also live in temperate climates. So I already know what those ones are. Um, so the classifications we want are 1, 2, and 3, and uh, 14 and 15. So I'm going to remove all the values, and I'm just going to add just those values. So I'm going to click on Add Values, uh, get the complete list, and we're going to add 1. I'm going to hold Control to get 1, 2, and 3, and then uh, 14 and 15. Click OK, then click Apply. Let's close out of this. And so this is what we want. Basically, uh, grasshoppers, or not grass, I keep saying grasshoppers for some reason. <laughs> Probably because I like using you know, grasshopper, but um, fireflies. 
uh, they like uh, temperate climates, so this part of the United States, and also tropical climates, so that's what this band down here means. Um, all this other stuff around is areas that are drier or too cold or um, not suitable for fireflies. I'm going to uncheck this box here. I've got, I went to layer properties, all their values, and that's just going to remove all this other stuff. So now we have a simple map. Based off our research, you can say that these are the habitats that fireflies would tend to live in. So now that we have that, we have that, and we have this. Let's make our drawing. So I'm going to go to the paper space. I'm going to set an extent. I'm going to start with the uh, the uh, the uh, light pollution drawing, and uh, yeah, move this over like that. And uh, let's just pick an extent of that area, maybe something like that. And then I'm going to set a bookmark. I'm going to call this one um, light pollution. So now if I move around, I still have that. So let's just take this and export that by itself. And then we're going to overlay the vectors on top of that later. So let's do uh, export map. I'm just going to save my desktop. And I'll save it as a any raster format works. Um, JPEG, PNG, TIFF. TIFF will give you the best quality. So I'd recommend me using TIFF. Uh, 200 DPI is fine. We don't need any more than that. I'm going to call this one fire or uh, light pollution. So save. Let that do its thing. Okay, and then I'm going to turn off the this background layer and I'm going to turn on the uh, habitat layer here. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to uh, export that as a AI file because it's a vector format. So we'll call this one Firefly Hab. Hab for habitat. All right, I'm going to save it as AI. It's interesting. Let's see what happens. Okay, so when it finished exporting, this is what we get. So a nice vector drawing of our uh, habitats. I'm just going to zoom out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do what I always do when I export things to vectors is I uh, first I go to select, object, clipping masks, and then hit the delete key to get rid of all the clipping masks. And then I ungroup all the layers. So I just click the master uh, selection thing here and I do control shift G. And that begins to ungroup all the groups. And when that's done, I'm going to just click Save. And we'll call this one Firefly Hab. Save. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, you know, maybe I don't really need this level of detail. I just want to know where the fireflies live. So I don't really need to have that breakdown of the climate uh, classification. Maybe uh, for your projects, you might want a finer grain of detail. But in that case, I don't. So I'm just going to make a copy of that uh, layer. I'm just going to select everything. I'm just going to make everything one color. So let's just make it, a, say, like a black and white. Yeah. So I'll just click on Save. And then let's do our Photoshop. So open Photoshop. Let's create a new drawing. So 48 by 36. I'll do 150 pixels per inch. And then let's bring in the uh, the first image. So I'll do a place embedded, and let's do a uh, let's find the uh, light pollution drawing. So hit, just check that box, and then I'm going to bring in the uh, uh, place embedded. I'm bring in the Illustrator, so Firefly Hab. And again, when you bring in Illustrator files, use the uh, media box option. So now you see they overlay perfectly on top of each other. So then what we're going to do is just going to do some quick uh, work to make it look good. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get rid of this white background. We don't want any of these white borders, so I'm just going to match the color on the top and bottom. So what I'll do is simply is to uh, create a uh, another color layer, and I'm going to match that color with the background color by using the color picker. And then I'll just simply mask out the white. So I'll just 
with the, the whites up here, and then just uh, hold the Alt, Alt key, then hit the mask button. That masks the, the white parts. You can also just delete it um, if you want. I'm just doing a fancier method. And that should mask out that stuff. There's a little bit of white pixel on the top and bottom, so I just fix that by using the brush tool to mask out that line and that line. So now I have a nice clean base map. As you can see, this by itself actually is a quite a quite a nice map, just showing light uh, pollution in the world. You can see there is it's kind of a it map also maps out you know highly populated areas. But we're going to overlay the uh, firefly habitat on top of that. So I'm just going to take this layer. And I'm going to use a one of these filters like multiply, and then I'm going to add a color to that to make it pop out. Um, in this case, let's do say like a a red layer, like a red color. That doesn't look half bad. Um, maybe let's do this. Let's put this. Uh, that looks okay. As long as it reads and delivers the information that you want it to deliver, like just showing where is the intersection of light pollution and uh, the uh, temperate slash tropical climate, this just gives you a sense of what you need to show. Maybe let's. Uh, Try a different color style. Let's maybe make this uh, overlay. No. Lighten. Screen. Screen works pretty good. I can see the uh, the light of the uh, uh, city better. And I mean, let's make it a, a red, a pinker, pinker red. Okay. So it looks pretty good. So then what I did uh, when I was practicing this uh, tutorial is I said, okay, this by itself delivers the message that you want to deliver. You know, light pollution, firefly habitats, there's this problem in the world. And so you have these two data sets. It's very simple, very clean. Um, but now we want to add a, uh, create a story with this. So I added a title to this. So I just add a title. Um, and I was thinking, what should I call this map? Let me make this uh, 100 points so you can read it bigger. And then I thought to myself, well, I don't know if about you guys, but I love uh, Studio Ghibli movies, which is an animation company in Japan. And one of their best movies is this film called Grave of the Fireflies. Has anyone seen Grave of the Fireflies? OK. So I decided, oh, that this seems like an appropriate name for this, this uh, map, because it's about where the firefighters are dying. So. I use that as my title. Let's make it a bit bigger. Maybe 125. Oops. Let me let's make this uh, text a bit bolder. So I go like a uh, medium bold text. And then one thing I actually like to do, and this is a, this is a frank like uh, recommendation for graphics, is for your titles, like the less important important letters, like uh, the less important words, like of the. You can give that a bit of a, oops, what did I just do? You can give that a bit of a, a twist. So I like to give that, say, a Adobe, a serif font, and give that an italic, and then make that lowercase, for instance. And I think that looks pretty nice, actually, to like mix, you know, the important words with the less important words, and maybe make these a little bit smaller. Maybe make that say like 100. It's like a little graphic design trick. And then we can do is you can actually, uh, you know, save yourself uh, some time and say like, all right, well, the yellow here, that's the light pollution. That's where they're dying. So that's where what grave should be. So you make grave a yellow, the same yellow as the background yellow. And make the fireflies the same color as the red there. So now what you see is uh, what you've done is you've bake the legend within the title. So you're saving yourself a lot of like real estate by putting the legend within the title. So now you look at this map, you're instantly gonna say gray if this is where the yellow is, fireflies is the red, and this is their, the, the combination of those two uh, data sets. And then uh, you would create a text blurb to describe your map. So I would just throw in a quick text blurb real quick. So I just do a quick, uh, uh,
lorem ipsum. I'm gonna make that just a simple white text. So you can see, like, it's already beginning to look like a finished map. I would say, like, this by itself is a good enough map for, say, your uh, uh, first assignment. It's simple. It's clean. It is what it, it delivers a story, right? It's a very simple story uh, delivered in an effective way. And you, as you explain the map, are going to explain all the details about the story by yourself. But the map by itself is an image. It's a graphic. It's clean. It's simple. It's not overcomplicated. Now, what else can we do to this to make it more fun? Well, <clears throat> well first off, as I was making this map, I was, I was thinking to myself, man, such a sad movie, because Grave of the Fireflies is a sad movie. Um, if you ever, if you've ever seen this movie, Grave of the Fireflies, um, it's like it's one of the saddest movies of all time. You know, this, these, two, these two kids, you know, they're trying to survive in Japan, and they're playing with these fireflies. Um, um, and I won't, I won't spoil the movie, but uh, it's a very sad movie, and you, there are reasons why it's very sad, but there's just a lot of dark imagery in this. But I saw, you know, let's like make this a firefly-like thing. Like, you know, look, these, these lights, they kind of look like fireflies floating in space. So what I did was I, uh, I found a few images of fireflies. <laughs> so I found this image of I found this firefly, which is kind of creepy, but I found this image of like a firefly garden in the woods. So let's take that. I'm going to put that into the drawing. So let me uh, do this. Drag in that uh, firefly map in Japan. And we're going to use this as kind of like a uh, image in the foreground of the map. And then what we can do is, uh, let's do this. We can give it a uh, light in or a, let's find the right filter, maybe screen. Screen works pretty good. I move it down a bit. Then maybe mask out the top half so that you can see the map better. Like so. So now you're going to see, like, now the map is beginning to have a lot more character to it. And then as I was making this map, I was, like, crying while I was making it. And the reason I was crying is because I was, I was searching for Grave of the Fireflies, and I went on YouTube, and I found the soundtrack to this movie. And let's see if I can find the soundtrack. Soundtrack. So I was listening to the soundtrack while I was working on this. Um, it was, like, really sad. Working on this map and I was crying and I was making it. I was like, ugh. <laughs> These little fireflies are dying. <laughs> and then I said to myself, okay, well, you know, let's, why not? Let's have fun with it. And so I, I found a picture of that movie. And so I brought the picture into the, into the drawing here. And then I, Let's rasterize that. Let's clean up the background. Let's get rid of this black. And then just add a filter on top of that to make it stand out. And then maybe this color doesn't quite work with the, <laughs> the uh, image, so I, I changed the color using the hue saturation. To make, to make it match the, the background. And I, I, and I look at this image and I'm, I'm starting to cry. <laughs> and it's sad. But I'm done. There you go. And then, then you print this map out, uh, 36 by 48, and you present it at the review. And then as you're presenting the map, you play this song in the background. And everyone's sad. And then. Yeah, so that's it. So when you go back to studio, you're going to watch this movie now. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's uh, a map. You know, I've uh, created the whole Firefly story in about ten minutes. So, and you know what? Even this little thing here that I add little characters outside, it seems kind of silly, but actually, it I'm okay with that. Like if you actually do that, just the the important thing here is you got to have fun with the, the the assignment. You know, and if doing something like like ins getting inspired by this this movie is what you need to get inspired, then just show it on your drawing. So I'm gonna save this, save as sad map, and you're done. And that's what I got for you guys. Also, one other thing is I recommend generally I, I showed you this. Uh, I I like photo filters, so I like using this color lookup option. And so you can find ways to like make the map look more consistent. This just kind of like adds a like a nice coat of paint over everything to make it a bit more consistent. So you might find one that looks good. Like you know, like this looks pretty good, right? Adds a bit of contrast. Maybe it's But I, I like to play around with like these options and see what, what kind of results I get from that. Um, and they find an option you like, you, you, you bake it and you, you print it. And there you go. There's your sad firefly map. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. So I'll end the video now.